Hello grade 10 learners, have a nice day, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'll be discussing to you on how to determine if a binomial in the form of x minus r is a factor of a polynomial t of x by using factor theorem. Before we go on further, let us try to understand first what is factor theorem all about. The factor theorem states that the polynomial p of x has quantity of x minus r as a factor if and only if p of r is equal to zero. Conversely, if p of r is equal to zero, then x minus r is a factor of p of x. If you have observed, we have here a condition wherein we can say that x minus r is a factor of p of x. That is the only time when r p of r is equal to zero. Remember in my previous video, I have discussed you about remainder theorem. And P of R is just equal to the remainder. So meaning to say, if the remainder is equal to zero, then the binomial in the form of X minus R is a factor of a polynomial P of X. Actually, there are two methods of determining if X minus R is a factor of P of X. The first one is factor theorem. And of course, if we are going to utilize factor theorem, it includes the remainder theorem. And the second one is we can also determine if X minus R is a factor through synthetic division. So with this video, I'll be showing to you the two methods wherein we can determine if x minus r is a factor by using the factor theorem as well as the synthetic division. Now let's have the first example. Determine if x plus 2 is a factor of 5x cubed plus 3x squared minus 20x minus 14. So we have here our p of x is equal to 5x cubed plus 3x squared minus 20x minus 14. Next, we have to solve for our x. So our x is x plus 2. We have to solve this one first. Equate it with 0 and solve for x. So we have here negative 2. Now, we're going to substitute the variable x by negative 2. So we have p of negative 2 is equal to, bring down 5x, is substituted by negative 2, then you just copy the exponent 3, plus bring down 3, again x, is substituted by negative 2, then copy the exponent 2. Bring down negative 20, x is substituted by negative 2, and bring down negative 14. Now we'll simplify further. Bring down 5. Quantity of negative 2 cubed is equal to negative 8. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Plus bring the 3. Quantity of negative 2 square is equal to 4. So negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 20 times negative 2 is positive 40. Bring down negative 14. Now we'll simplify further. So we have 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. Plus 3 times 4 is 12. Bring down 40. Bring down negative 14. Now we'll simplify further. If you have observed, we have here negative 40 and also here positive 40. So we can... Combine the two, so negative 40 plus 40 is already 0. Now we have here 12 minus 14 is negative 2. So meaning to say our P of negative 2 is equal to 
negative 2. This is the remainder. So, it means that x plus 2 is not a factor of 5x cubed plus 3x squared minus 20x minus 12 since p of negative 2 is equal to negative 2. We can only say that it is a factor if our p of r is equal to 0. Okay, I have also here the solution using synthetic division. If you have observed, we also have here the remainder which is equal to negative 2. So we can also make use of synthetic division to determine whether the binomial is a factor or not. So since there is a remainder here, so the binomial x plus 2 is not a factor. If you have observed, they have the same value, negative 2. Okay, I have explained further about synthetic division. You will go over my video about it, but for this time, let me explain for a little while. So 5 is coming from the coefficient of the dividend. We have here 5. Then here we have 3 negative 20 and negative 14 this negative 2 is coming from value of x here so bring down 5 then multiply 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 add 3 plus negative 10 is negative 7 negative 7 times negative 2 is 14 and negative 20 plus 14 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2 is 12. Negative 14 plus 12 is negative 2. But this solution is not necessary. You may use this solution using the rim, uh, factor theorem. But if you are not required to make use of the factor theorem, you may also use the synthetic division. In other words, you have option which of the two you are going to choose. If you think using the factor theorem is easier for you, then you go for this. Or synthetic division, then you go for it. As long as there is no condition that you are going to make use of a specific method okay I'm just trying to show that you can make use of factor theorem or synthetic division now let's have the second example determine if 2x plus 1 is a factor of 12x cubed plus 8x squared minus 3x minus 2 so our p of x is equal to 12x cubed plus 8x squared minus 3x minus 2. So we have to solve for, for x. So we have to copy 2x plus 1 and equate this with 0 and solve for x. So we have 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. 1 is transposed to the right side, so it became negative 1. Now to solve for x, we have to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 2x divided by 2 is equal to x and negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half. Now we are going to substitute our x by negative 1 half. So we have here p of negative 1 half is equal to bring down 12 and x is substituted by negative 1 half. Just copy the exponent 3 plus bring down 8 x we have negative 1 half to the power of 2 minus 3 times negative 1 half bring down minus 2. Now we'll simplify first the term inside the parenthesis with exponents. So we have to bring down 12 and negative 1 half to the power of 3 is negative 1 8. Negative 1 half times negative 1 half times negative 1 half plus 8. And then we have here quantity of negative 1 of square is 1 fourth. 
So, negative 1 half times negative 1 half is positive 1 fourth. Negative 3 times negative 1 half is positive 3 halves. Bring down minus 2. Now, we have to simplify further. So, we have 12 multiplied by negative 1 eighth. So, 12 can be factored out as 4 times 3. And 8 can also be factored out as 4 times 2. Now, we can divide the common factor, so which is 4 here and also 4. Multiply 3 times negative 1. We have negative 3 and the denomin denominator part. We have here 1 times 2 is 2. That's why we have here negative 3 halves. Next, 8 can be factored out as 4 times 2 and divide a common factor. So we have here 4 and 4. Now multiply 2 times 1. We have here 2. Bring down 3 halves. Bring down negative 2. Now we are going to add. If you have observed, we have here fraction and integer. So negative 3 halves plus 3 halves. That is 0. And we also have here positive 2 plus negative 2 is also 0. So therefore, our P of negative 1 half is equal to 0. So meaning to say this is our remainder. So it means that 2x plus 1 is a factor of 12x cubed plus 8x squared minus 3x minus 2 since p of negative 1 half is equal to 0. If you have observed with the solution using synthetic division, you have also here the value of the remainder which is equal to 0. Now let me explain for a shorter uh, shorter way of finding the synthetic division. So we have here 12, the coefficient of this. Then we have here 8, negative 3, and negative 2. x is negative 1 half. Okay, now we have to bring down 12. 12 times negative 1 half is negative 6. 8 times plus negative 6 is 2. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 half is 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So if we have here, we have here our remainder. But this one here is our quotient part. So we still have to divide the quotient part by... 2 since we have divide uh, in our divisor we also have here denominator of 2 that's why our final answer for quotient is 12 divided by 2 is 6 2 divided by 2 is 1 and negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 that's why in our final answer here we have 6 1 and negative 2 but the remainder is just the same we have here too. So if you have observed, they have the same answer. Either by using the factor theorem or the synthetic division. Okay. Thank you so much for watching guys. Kind like. And if you have questions regarding the video, just write it in the comment box. Kindly share it to other students for them to learn or master the lesson. And don't forget to subscribe to be updated for more math lesson videos and turn the bell for notifications. Before I end, let me share to you one of the verses from the Bible. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1 verse 7. That's all for today and God bless you all.